Okay, in this video we're going to look at the following result from number theory known as the Chinese remainder theorem. So we start off with k natural numbers that are pairwise relatively prime. So the GCD of ni and nj is 1, obviously, if i is not equal to j. Good. And then we also have k integers. And then given that setup, we have a system of linear congruences. So x is congruent to b1 mod n1, and x is congruent to bk mod nk, and everything in between. And this system of linear congruence has a unique solution, and that uniqueness is modulo the product of the little n's, so the product n1 to nk. Okay, good. So, this is the statement, and now we'll look at the proof. So the proof is a constructive proof, so we'll first construct a solution, and then show that this solution is unique up to this modular equivalence. So, uh, the first thing that we want to do is consider the following numbers. So let's let capital N equal the product N1 to NK and capital NI equal N divided by little ni. So in other words, this is the product of all of the little ni's except for, sorry, of all of the little n's except for little ni. Okay, good. And now, we first make the claim that the GCD of capital ni with little ni is 1. So let's do that. So little ni, capital ni is 1. Okay, good. So let's suppose that D divides little ni and D divides capital ni. Okay, good. And then, since all of the nj are relatively prime, That tells us that D must divide one of the components of Ni. In other words, it must divide one of these little n's that is not little ni. So in other words, um, we have D divides um, Nj for J not equal to i. Good. Um, so what that tells us is that D divides the GCD of NI and NJ, but that's equal to 1. So D divides 1, which that tells us that D equals 1. Okay, good. So we have established that the GCD of little NI and capital NI is 1. I'll clean up the board and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. So remember we have our setup of this capital N and this capital NI and then we just had this fact that we established that the GCD of little NI and capital NI equals 1. Okay, great. And so that's important because that means that capital NI has an inverse modulo little ni. So let's let xi be that inverse modulo little ni. In other words, let's let xi um, be such that capital NI times little xi is congruent to 1 mod little ni. Okay, good. So, um, this is possible because the GCD of ni and ni is equal to 1, and we proved this possibility in a previous video. Okay, so now we've got this xi is the inverse of capital NI, so let's see what we can do with that. I'll clean up this little bit of the board and then we're almost done. Okay, so let's recall by our construction, we have xi times NI is congruent to 1 mod little NI. 
So we got that because we know capital NI and little ni are relatively prime, so that means capital NI has a modular inverse modulo little ni. So that's, that's good to notice. And that, let's also notice that if we take capital NI times XI, that's going to be congruent to zero mod NJ for I not equal to J. Okay, so let's think about why that is true. So recall that capital NI was the product of all of the little n's save um, little n i, which means it is a multiple of n j. Good, so since it's a multiple of n j, it's congruent to zero mod n j. And now recall, this is all happening for all i and j between one and k. Okay, good. So the next thing we want to do is consider the following. So let's consider this number, so x, which is e equal to capital X1, capital N1, B1, where these Bs are coming from the right-hand side of these modular equivalences. So plus X2 into B2 plus up to XK, capital NK, little BK. Good. Now let's consider this modulo NI. Good. So if we consider this equivalent mod NI, then every term here where uh, the subscript is not equal to i will be zero from this observation we made. And every other term, well, the x and the n's will be one, leaving us with just b. So in other words, we'll have zero plus, zero plus, x i, n i, b i, plus zero plus zero mod little n i, but we already know that this xi and this ni is 1, so that, that tells us that x is congruent to bi mod little ni. And this is true for all i between 1 and k. So in other words, we have constructed a solution. And that solution is of this form where these are inverse pairs modulo um, little ni. Okay, great. So that's the existence part of the solution. Now we want to look at the uniqueness part of the solution. So I'll clean up the ward and we'll do that. Okay, good. So now let's suppose that X and Y are each solutions. So that tells us that X is congruent to BI mod NI and y is congruent to bi mod ni, and this is for all i from 1 to k. Good. And so now using the arithmetic properties of equivalences, that tells us that x minus y is congruent to 0 mod little ni um, for i from 1 to k. And then working back towards the definition, that tells us that Ni divides x minus y for all i from 1 to k. And now let's look at this. This tells us that um, x minus y is a multiple of little Ni for all of these Ni's. But recall that these Ni's are relatively prime to each other. So that means this is a multiple of a bunch of relatively prime numbers. In other words, it's got to be a multiple of their product. So all of those words tell us that capital N divides X minus Y, which that follows immediately via the definition that X is congruent to Y mod capital N. Finishing the proof. So we have a construction of the solution and we also have the uniqueness property of this solution. Okay, good. In another video, we'll do some examples.